you start to tell a story. It's about your daughter or your begonia or your cat, how it died or you thought it might die, or it didn't die but you know it will, and knowing weighs you down but lifts it up, the cat or the begonia which is beginning to bloom, or the daughter who is also, into a light so bright you can't see, and your tongue dries, and all the words trail off into radiance. Then your neighbor walks in. He thinks it's his geranium you're speaking of, the green spice on his fingers, breaking off even a dead leaf, and the hairs of his dog. But you insist it's your cat you're talking about. Stick to the fingers and smell like begonias, or like your daughter just come in from cutting lilacs in the yard. And you despair over begonias, geraniums, all the blooming daughters. Then you recall a gardenia browning at the edges of your first dance. And you think, life is like that, browning at the edges before you realize you talk begonia, he listens geranium, and you're both wrong, but quiet in a silence, browning at the edges when you start to tell a story. The next poem is one that I wrote um, for my mother, and I'll try to say it for you. Her name was Margaret, and that is the name of the poem. Margaret. Margaret is a field. In the field, goldenrod thickens. Weeds grow so tall that by August you can't see. Margaret is a path through the field, and she is where the path disappears. Margaret is the house with a red door and the room with a maroon floor where four children sleep a troubled sleep. When they wake, she sends them outside, and they raise a calf a collie, each other. Margaret smokes so she can see each sigh. She smokes constantly. The ashtrays overflow. Later, as therapy, she will make ashtrays. Margaret is a dream Margaret once had. She drinks toward the dream she can't quite forget and doesn't dare remember. She wakes to choose sleep. She is a wrong turn Margaret took, or several turns. She is bad about directions. Margaret is not a door that opens, nor cruelty, nor a bed, nor forgiveness. But she can be forgiven. I repeat, Margaret is a field and a path through the field, and the point where the path disappears. She will not come to find you. Because she will not come to find you, you start out deep in that gold and weedy field. And from Thresh and Hold, I will say to you, the poem that comes closest to being a title poem is called simply Threshold. The night you lay dying, there was a space around the house into which nothing untoward could come, in which nothing but your dying could take place. It was a hole in the field, like the hush into which a child is born, as if at all times, or whenever necessary, shafts of quiet pierce the world. We don't know the ways of the soul. But we know how an artist makes a map of somewhere foreign, then telescopes one spot forward to show details. You lay on the bed, breathing hard, a lens of lamplight. Your husband on one side of you, I on the other, we told small round stories, beads on a string we passed over you, as if that were your job, 
as if that were our job, while yours was counting out your breath to the last. When I left, I took the waiting with me, but it wasn't waiting. There was no time in it. I woke before dawn with these words, Why do you seek the dead among the living? The call came, like news of someone arrived safely in another country. I am always surprised that the word threshold hinges on just one H each time I write one for thresh and one for hold.